The gallbladder stores and concentrates bile during fasting and releases it into the duodenum to aid with the digestion of fatty food. The gallbladder is able to increase the concentration of bile through the absorption of water by the specialised cells that line its lumen. This concentrated bile leaves the gallbladder as a result of the actions of the vagus nerve and also cholecystokinin, or CCK, which is released by the epithelium of the duodenum. Both stimulation by the vagus nerve and CCK cause the gallbladder to contract and expel bile. The consequence of the gallbladder acting as a concentrator and reservoir for bile is that it increases the risk for the development of gallstones and the spectrum of conditions that it's associated with their presence. With regard to what gallstones are made of, they are typically divided into one of three categories. In 20% of cases, they are primarily made of cholesterol. In 5% of cases, they consist of bile pigment. And the majority that are left are a combination of the two and we refer to these as mixed stones. If we have a look at how cholesterol stones form first, it starts with the liver releasing cholesterol into the bile. The cholesterol then gets bound to a phospholipid called lecithin, forming structures called unilamella vesicles. These vesicles are then stored within the bile in the gallbladder, at which point, bile salts begin to dissolve them in an attempt to produce a more soluble form of the vesicles. However, these newly formed more soluble vesicles actually have a lower binding capacity for cholesterol, which means that if there is a higher concentration of cholesterol within the bile, then the binding capacity of these vesicles will be exceeded, and as a result, cholesterol stones are going to form. So for cholesterol stones to form, we need the bile to remain static and also become more concentrated, both of which are going to happen in the gallbladder. And lastly, we need a high cholesterol content in the bile to start off with. Pigment stones form in a very different way. It starts off with haemoglobin being broken down, which results in the formation of bilirubin. Initially, this bilirubin is in an unconjugated or insoluble form. However, when it reaches the liver, the majority of it will be converted into a conjugated form, which allows bilirubin to be soluble within the bile. However, if the pathway by which conjugation occurs becomes overloaded, potentially by the production of too much unconjugated bilirubin by increased haemoglobin breakdown, then this results in a buildup of insoluble bilirubin within the bile. This insoluble bilirubin may then combine with calcium within the bile, resulting in the formation of pigment stones, which tend to be a lot smaller than their cholesterol-rich counterparts.